In 2008, America witnessed a significant change in political history. This change was driven by the impact that the Internet and social media had on the presidential election. And since that time, various incidents around the world have demonstrated the power that these platforms bring to politics. In popular form, Topics and Equation Research recently surveyed 1,000 U.S. voters and found some further information on the relationship between politics and the Internet. And Chris Tolles, the CEO of Topics, is joining us now by way of Skype to talk about the study and its findings. It's great to have you today, Chris. Thank you, Abby. You're very welcome. Well, first of all, let's talk about some of the political events over the past few years and the role that the web has played in them. What trends have you specifically noticed from topics in this regard? You know, I think one of the things is that we've had the biggest spikes of traffic around the elections and around the midterms that we've had in the past couple of years. So like the 2008 election and the uh, 2010 midterms were huge for us. And during 2010, we actually put out um, the ability for people to uh, give us a proxy vote for their uh, uh, for the candidates both local and national mm -hmm. and or for state and federal offices and we had a huge amount of, of response on that we had like you know 200,000 proxy votes over the course of a couple of weeks uh, which is relatively big for us and I also saw that um, other services like for example the fact that CNN uh, started referencing Twitter, I think, back in, I want to say, the two th certainly the 2008 elections. Um, and now it's basically online is really connected to television as well as connected to um, what other people are thinking and doing. And we did some research, and the, the, the results of that were that a quarter of the electorate forms or uh, modulates their political opinion based on online forum sites like ours or mm -hmm. The Examiner or Patch. And I think that's pretty huge right. to basically see how people are working these issues out themselves by talking to the people on the net. Right, and absolutely. A, a Gallup poll study from last year found that the majority of the U.S. distrust media, so which which basically just solidifies your research. So what are your thoughts on this? You know, I, I, it's kind of funny. It's almost like if you've been watching that how uh, Newt Gingrich has been playing this, which is basically accused the media of, of trying to destroy America. But when you look at how Newt Gingrich actually interacts with individual people in the press. There's a couple stories that came out and says that, hey, he's got a great relationship with individual reporters. And I think that's what's going on here is that an individual wants a relationship with a person, not with not with necessarily a media organization. And so you might think, you know, mainstream media is destroying things, but then you go, oh, I read this guy and I, I trust. It's like, a, it's a, I think people want a personal relationship with their news. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going on here is that they want to actually have an ability to take a stand and be able to interact with the news and sort of talk back to it. And so it's easier to do that with a person, but also they want to have that interaction and that interactivity that they get on the net, more so than they want to necessarily listen to what ABC tells them to do, for example. Right. Well, let's get further into the study. Um, what are some of the other highlights that you found? Um, really, the, the, the two big pieces were how much of, of folks opinions are formulated by talking to other people on the net, you know, like a quarter of the electorate or it was, you know, to the tune of almost 40% of the people who use online forums and so forth. The second thing was that they wanted to see both sides of the issue. They didn't want to just see a place to go and have, you know, have everyone agree. They wanted to see both sides, you know, make a case. I think that's the other part of it too, is like, I don't think people are, are out there wanting to just get, you know, to be in a place where they're just in an echo chamber. They do want to see both sides come out and make a case so that they can make a decision. Right, both sides in the same place. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Well, even though television is still the biggest source that voters rely on for political information, the internet is not too far behind. So do you see the web surpassing TV going forward? I, I think it's a little different. I mean, I, I'm always a big fan of internet triumphalism and to say that the TV will be eventually just totally unimportant. But I think that I think that television and the internet are to some degree merging a little bit. I mean, a little it, to some degree it's going to be TV is going to be one more window on your on your screen, mm -hmm. right? I look at it as as the internet's just going to subsume it with a board. It's just going to it's just going to take over. But it's not like TV is going to go away. I don't. But I don't think you can really separate them. It's going to come down to uh, television. I mean, again, when you have CNN, uh, you know, talking about Twitter, and when you talk about having these, I mean, it's a little silly to have these national networks to go pluck something off of Facebook or Twitter in terms mm -hmm. of a question. That's not probably the right the best way to use uh, the internet as a resource. But mm -hmm. again, the fact that these things are 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 really uh, in the process of merging is important. And I, I, again, I don't think they're separable. It's not going to be like, oh yeah, internet's going to win and TV's going to lose. It's more like, mm -hmm. it's all going to be the same thing. But but the idea of interactivity is really what the net brings to the whole, the whole debate. It says, hey, here's what a lot of us have to think and you can't ignore 
it, it's it's no longer going to be a small coterie of people deciding what the issues are. Uh, it's going to be a larger plurality of the electorate who's going to actually sort of decide what the conversation is going to be about. Right, but it is very interesting that that people are speculating, you know, who would be elected based on Twitter results and Facebook results. That just shows the power that that these platforms have. I, I think you just go to ask Ron Paul. I mean, if you go look at that. <laughs> I mean, basically, you put out any anything that involves, like, you know, Ron Paul versus anyone else, Ron Paul wins, mm -hmm. always, yeah. always. And I think that you've got a lot of passionate people who are very motivated and uh, very organized on the Internet. And I think that you're, you're seeing this now that he's, you know, Ron Paul's got, you know, somewhere like between, you know, 10 and 25 percent of the GOP primary vote in any all, all of these different um, primaries. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that'll be enough to get him into, into office this time. But I'm pretty sure that's enough to get him into the conversation. And I think that's what's going on right now. Absolutely. Well, what do you think overall of the implications of this study are for not only voters, but also for the politicians involved? I think that for the voters, they're giving more choices or they're getting more choices. They're getting more of an opportunity to be involved in the process in a scalable way. Because, I mean, if you look at, you know, the United States circa uh, 1780 or something like that, I mean, Congress a congressman represented a relatively small number of people and now you know a a congressman in California is representing a very large number of people to the point where hey what's my what's my interaction to that process or if you look at a senator you know half the population of California is like you know tens of millions of people and that's one person representing me whereas the internet gives you a chance as a as an individual to get a little bit bigger part of the process and I think that's the real uh, hope and what this can provide is a a scalable way to do this many-to-many -many interaction and I, I, I have real hope for that type of thing and for, for topics uh, what it means is you know this is gonna be a great place to give a platform for those people to be able to put their opinions out there as well as for people to, to you know put up what they have to say to the people in the case of politicians and I think again for politicians it's gonna be if this is the largest best and most scalable way to reach a lot of people they're gonna have to figure out how to do that whether mm -hmm. it's working with with people like Topics or Patch or right. Facebook or Twitter, that's all going to be part of the plan. Absolutely. And if you were to conduct another survey closer to the elec to the election, do you see a, a greater influence from from the internet in these numbers? Oh, I'm sure. And I think that a lot of this comes down to, I mean, just look what happened a, a couple weeks ago with the uh, Stop Online Piracy Act. Right. I mean, basically. This is the MPAA going in there and spending 4x as much as the tech industry, mm -hmm. and yet the tech industry essentially sort of alerted the populace what was going on, and you know the populace responded, and you had one of the largest upsets in lobbying history, and I think that's that's a sign. If people are are made aware of these things, they're going to take action, and I think that's something that you're going to see closer to the election. I think you'll you'll have. The opportunity, anyway, for some surprises to come out through mass action on the internet, whether it's Twitter or Tumblr or Facebook or, you know, or topics. All right. All right. Very interesting information, Chris. Thank you so much for talking with us. We appreciate it. Absolutely, and thanks a lot for talking. I always like talking to Web Pro News. Great, and I'm Abby Johnson reporting for Web Pro News.